Hey coders, this is Chris and I'm here with episode 3 of how to make a YouTube video app. In the previous lesson, we had gone into the storyboard and added a table view. Now we added a prototype cell and furthermore, we hooked up that element to this IB outlet property called table view. In this lesson, we are going to create the data that we need to power this table view. Basically, what videos is this table view going to display? So I mentioned in the previous video that we're going to be doing a basic version with hard-coded data simply because parsing of the feeds is a little bit advanced for right now. So what I'm going to do is in the left hand side in the file navigator, I'm going to create two new classes. First, I'm going to create a class that represents our video object. And next, I'm going to create another class that will represent our model. And this is going to be the class that handles all of the data and returns that data to the view controller. So in the future, if we were to, let's say, uh, change up the data source to get the videos from a feed, let's say, we only have to modify code in the model as opposed to putting everything inside this view controller and then having a really long file that's really hard to maintain. So what you're going to do on this left hand side is right click or if you got a one button mouse I hold down control and click and you're going to get a menu like this and then choose new file. Make sure you're under iOS source and we're going to choose Coco Touch class. Now for the class name I'm going to call this video and it's going to be a subclass of NS object. If this is not what you see you're going to want to type in NS object exactly as it looks here, capital N, capital S, capital O, lowercase b, j, e, c, t. Okay, and make sure the language is set to Swift if it's not already. Click Next, and then just click Create. And by default, it should have that folder selected, your project folder. So it's going to create the file down here. I'm just going to drag it and move it up here. So now we have a, a video class. I'm going to start by declaring some properties of this video object that we expect to have. So if you think of this class as representing one of our videos, what sorts of metadata or what sorts of pieces of information would a video have? So let me bring up my YouTube channel, which is, these are going to be the videos I'm going to be displaying. So it has stuff like a title. If I click into it, let me just mute it there. Uh, it has a description. And furthermore, it has an ID, which is how YouTube identifies this video. We're going to need this ID in order to display the video later on in uh, when the user drills down and selects a video. And we also need this ID in order to get the thumbnail image to display in our table view. So right here, I'm going to say var video ID colon string. And let me explain this line here. I'm declaring a new property for this video class called video ID. And it's going to be of type string, which is just a piece of text. So that's what this colon string means. And I'm going to assign it a value. I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to do two quotes. And this is an empty piece of text. It's what I am initializing this video ID to. So this equal sign means I'm assigning this empty string into this property. So whenever I create a new video object, it's going to have a video ID of empty string. Next, I'm going to say video title, and it's also going to be a string, and I'm going to initialize it to that. Uh, lastly, we have video description. It's going to be a string as well, and empty string. So now, I have a video class which I can create multiple video objects from and each video object has its own set of uh, video ID, video title, and video description. Okay, so now we're going to create another class. Let's right click, choose new file. We're going to go make sure you're under iOS source again. Choose Coco Touch class. In this one we're going to call it our video model. And model might be an unfamiliar term for you unless you've seen the uh, Start Here series on my channel page uh, where you learned about the model view controller framework. 
So the video model class is going to be responsible for supplying all of the video objects to the view controller. So the view controller is going to be communicating with the model to get the data. It's also going to be a subclass of NS object. Make sure it's typed exactly this way and make sure that the language is Swift. Click next and click create. So I'm going to move this up here again. And then in the video model, I'm going to create a method for the view controller to call for the data. So I'm going to write FUNC to declare a new method. And for my method name, I'm going to just call it get videos, open bracket, close bracket. And inside these brackets is where I would specify some input parameters if I wanted to. And that just means those are the parameters which I also must pass in to call get videos. But because I don't require any additional info when view controller calls get videos, I'm not going to put any input parameters in here. Now I'm going to type dash and this arrow and what I'm doing here is specifying a return type. So that means that whenever get videos is called, it's going to return some sort of data. And here when I'm specifying the return type, that's the type of the data that gets returned. So I'm going to return an array of video objects. So arrays are something that you should have learned in the start here lessons as well. That's why I'm saying that those videos should be watched before this YouTube series. So we're going to declare an array and we're going to type in the video class that we created here. So this specifies that the get videos method is going to return an array of video objects. And then we do two curly braces. So if you type in this curly brace like the opening one and then you press enter, it should fill in the second one for you like that. If it doesn't, you can just type it in. So right now Xcode is immediately complaining about something. It's saying missing return in a function that is expected to return an array of video, right? So we're going to remedy that very quickly here. Let's declare a local variable inside this method called, uh, I'll just call it the videos. And we're going to say it is equal to an empty video object array. So let me explain the difference between this line here and this line. Up here, I'm specifying that this method returns this sort of type, this class type. Whereas here, I'm creating a new instance of this class. And so this is an actual video array object, whereas this simply is the type or the class type. If you're confused about the difference between a class and an object, uh, check out lessons 9 and 10 of the Start Here series and that explains the basic object-oriented programming concepts. So in other words, this is telling me what sort of data gets returned and this is a piece of the actual data. So right now this is an array that is empty and I'm assigning it to this video's local property. So whenever I type videos, I'm actually using this empty array here. And then Xcode is giving us a warning and saying that uh, it's never used, but we, we will use it soon. So let's ignore that for now. So here I'm going to create a comment by doing slash slash. You can see there are some comments up here. These don't affect the execution of the app, but they're useful as documentation as we go along and to remind us of what we're doing in the future when we look at our code. So I'm going to say um, create a video object assign properties append it into the videos array so we're going to do this maybe five times once for each video so I'm going to use the keyword let which is kind of like declaring another variable except that with a variable I can assign different things to it over and over with the let statement you're declaring a variable that you can only assign one thing to and then you can't assign something else to it and that's called a constant so I'm, I'm gonna call this constant video one and I'm gonna create a new video object so this is a new instance of this guy this class that we created okay so I'm gonna say here video one dot video ID is equal to this first video right here. So in the URL bar, I want to select what's after the V equals. So I'm going to 
Command C to copy that and Command V to paste it there. But actually, it's a string. You have to uh, surround it by quotes. Okay, so video one dot video title. Now I'm going to assign it a title. So I'm going to just copy this title here. Video one dot description. Uh, not description. Sorry, video description is the property that we created. And I'm going to select just this right here. I'm going to paste that there. Might have to get rid of the line breaks like that. Uh, and then finally, let's append it to our videos array. So we say videos dot append and we can put in video one. Okay, so so far we have one video in this array that we declared up here. And then at the end of this method, I'm going to use the return keyword to return the data because remember this get videos method has to return this type of data, an array of video objects. So I'm going to return videos, which is our array of video objects. So let's just add a comment up here. Create an empty array of video objects. And then in here, return the array to the caller. So what we've just done here is we've created an array of video objects. We've created a single video object. We've set its properties. And then we've added it to the array. And then finally, we return that array to the caller. So I'm going to repeat this for maybe four more videos. So we have a total of five. So since we're hard coding the data, all I'm going to do is highlight this. I'm going to press Command C to copy it. Create two lines here, maybe three lines. Press Command V to paste it. And then change this constant from video one to video two. And I'm going to have to change all of these ones to twos. You have to be very careful about doing this because if you miss even one of these variable names, uh, it's going to cause unexpected problems in your application. So I'm going to change the properties of this and I'm going to do this for uh, four more videos. So I have a total of five. I'm not going to make you guys sit through that. So I'm going to stop recording while I do that and then I'll be back. Hey coders, I'm back. So now I've got five video objects. So we started with this one and then I created four more copy and pasting that chunk of code, changing the variables from video one to video two, um, changing the video ID, the title, the description, and then doing it for all of these videos. So now I have five videos in my array. And I'm gonna return these videos to the caller of this method. Now make sure you save it in case you lose your data. Now we're gonna go into the view controller and from the view controller, we're going to get that list of videos or array of videos from the video model. And then it's going to pass it to the table view to display. And actually, it works the other way around as we're going to learn a couple of videos later. It's the table view that asks the view controller for the data. And then the view controller, because it has that array of video objects, it's going to be well equipped to supply the table view with that data to display. Okay, so first things first, up here in the view controller, let's declare a property called videos. And this may seem very familiar. It's going to be an array of video. And right here, I'm going to immediately assign it an empty video array. And then in the view did load of the view controller, this method automatically gets called when the storyboard has loaded. Uh, and thus the name view did load. So after the view has loaded, I'm going to say self.videos, which is referencing this guy right here, is equal to video model. So let's create a new video model object like that. Uh, I got an extra M in there. It should turn into this turquoise or greenish color. Turquoise, actually, if uh, it's a correct class name. So I'm going to create this video model object and I'm going to say dot get videos. So right here you can see that it detects the method and this is the return type. It returns an array of video objects which is the same type that this property is. 
so we won't have any problems doing this all right so what we've done here is we've created a new video model object and then we're calling the get videos method on that and assigning the result or that passed back data into self.videos so later when the table view asks the view controller uh, for the data to display um, the view controller can just access the stuff in self.videos to tell the table view what to display and if you went through the start here lessons and you're a little bit confused about this line where we're doing kind of two things at once uh, we can actually split it up so I can do something like let model equals video model so we're gonna declare a new video model object and assign it into model and then in here instead of writing this I can say model dot get videos so what I did before was just saving a step I I didn't declare a separate variable or constant to store the video model object uh, because I wouldn't need it later on alright so we're one step closer to displaying our YouTube videos in our table view I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson please like it subscribe and share it with others if you did and I hope you guys have a happy weekend I'll see you guys on Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Bye for now.